Gadget, made in America, based outside of Nashville, Tennessee. Yak Gadget offers all kinds of storage accessories, quick mount motor mounts, anchor systems, track mounted accessories, even paddles. Go to yakgadget.com and get your kayak decked out for your next trip out on the water. The 153 Bay Company, based in Troy, Ohio, make everything from plastics to custom painted hard baits. Hook them hard and hook them off. All of our baits are made to order and all of our hard baits are hand painted to order. So go to the153anglers.com to place your order today. Based in Santa Ana, California, BioAno Power provides the highest performance lithium ion phosphate batteries for the marine market. These batteries are one quarter the weight of sealed lead acid batteries, provide over 2,000 to 3,000 charge cycles, and a 10 plus year service life. These batteries can be used for any deep cycle application, including running fish finders, trolling motors, live wells, and LED lights. For more information, visit BioAnoPower.com. That's B I O E N N O P O W. WER.com or contact dealers nationwide. Welcome to the Paddle and Fin Podcast Network. This is the final cast segment with your hosts, Brad Hicks and Josh Eldridge, where we cast our final opinions on all products, good and bad. Welcome to the final cast. Yo, welcome back to the final cast. Trash Panda, aka Josh, here with the big kahuna himself, Brian the Killer Schiller. What's what up, up? Brian? How you doing, man? I'm good. How about you? I don't know. I just got serenaded by that Bioeno power commercial. Dude, it's like a Coldplay song, man. I remember when I edited that, I was like, this is so perfect. Like, Josh has got that perfect advertising radio voice. I love it. I love it. It's the it's the uh, the gentle light piano in the background. I just feel like I'm at a Coldplay concert, and you know. <laughs> well, I remember when I asked you to uh, do the voiceover, you were like, "I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I ain't gonna be no good at that." And then I was editing it, and I was like, "Dude, this sounds pretty sweet. This came out good." I was like proud of myself that I made it sound that good. It did come out good, and here's what was a shocker: I only did that in two takes. Yeah. I read yeah. it, the whole thing in one one take. The first time I did it, I messed up like, I don't know, three sentences in. And then I was like, oh, this is going to take me forever. And I did the second one and I listened to it. I'm like, dude, I, I got it. Cool. Here, <laughs> here you go. Let me know if you need me to redo it. So, No, it worked out great, man. But uh, welcome to the final cast again, man. It's been a little, a little bit of time since we had you on. I can't even remember the last time. I don't we had know. you uh, do. I think it was like a Douglas Rods one, maybe or something. Yeah, like that. I, yeah don't, I don't. remember. You and Brad do it together. Me, you, and Brad. Uh, maybe. yeah, or something you. like. I I forget. I don't know. It's hard to keep track of all these <laughs> podcasts I do, dude. It's crazy. We're on what season twenty six, episode <laughs> one thousand sixty five. It's uh, season four in. Uh, so this will air Thursday, which means the Monday after this airs, it'll be the 600th episode for Paddle and Finn. Nice. Yeah, crazy. Okay, three, three years, 600 episodes. Our birthday is that week, too. We're going to have a yeah. big, big, big birthday episode live. You guys will want to tune in. Yeah, Give that's good. Week. Will that be this coming Monday? Yeah, okay. from when this... When this releases, it'll be this coming Monday. Yep. Uh, we'll go live at like 7 Central, 8 Eastern. Uh, we'll have some stuff to give away uh, from some of the companies we all work with. And uh, uh, we got some paddle and fin T-shirts from the trail series we could throw out there. Stuff like that. So So what's the date? Uh, see, I knew you were going to spot like this. Oh. Because this is going to air after this coming Monday. Yeah, no, it'll, yeah, it's the 21st. Oh, okay, the 21st. Yeah. So then, yeah, yeah, the Monday after this airs, which we yeah. will air this on June 17th. And then, um, okay, so the 21st, you guys, tune in. We'll go live, right? We're doing it live? Yep, yep, we're doing it live. We'll have a list of guests to... Um, join us you know previous guests that have been on the podcast we're gonna try to get a variety in there uh, 
you may see an epic return of the Godfather uh -oh. once again. Yeah, uh -oh. so uh, I think he's in. I think he's in. So nice. uh, he may come join me and Jay at the studio and uh, uh, sit in on the podcast, man. It's pretty cool. That's cool, man. Hell yeah. It's going to be a good time. Our uh, live shows, when we have a lot of people involved, are always funny. They're always yeah. fun. Yeah. Hilarious. Yeah. When you get a bunch of us like kayak fishing junkies all together in one broadcast, it gets pretty rowdy. Mm -hmm. I think the last time that happened was like a uh, like an after hours or something like that. Yeah. People have been asking us to bring that back, but. Yeah. Yeah. We got it, it, man. We got it. It might have to be like one that we just do, and we're like, yeah, we're not sending that out. Like, <laughs> yeah, there, there's been times where like we're like, yeah, we definitely got to edit this and clean it up a little bit, but uh, we'll we'll get one or two, maybe three or four in this year for sure. Yeah, I think it's 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 a special thing. We'll just do it every now and then, man. Yeah. Well, I invited Brian to talk about the new Canoe Unlimited. Um, we've been seeing a couple boats lately that just got released, like the Hobie Lynx. Um, what else was there? Uh, we got the new Canoe Unlimited. Um, we just recently, I mean, this was kind of released last year towards the end of the year, but we had the, uh, the uh, Old Town boats that were kind of new. And yep. um, so I wanted to ask Brian to get some some of his viewpoint on this boat because you've now spent some time with it and i think it's a i was really excited to see that when i saw that kayak um it's a it's a badass boat dude it's uh it's got a lot of cool stuff a lot of good thought out things to it we know how awesome new canoe, new canoe is with the uh, bow mounted trolling motors on it they were kind of like the ones that i don't want to say started but they kind of did you know, there were, I think it was the first time I kind of saw somebody doing that was on the new canoe. Um, but yeah, what's been your opinion so far, Brian? You like it? Oh, dude, I love it, man. Um, I got mine, I think it was beginning of April. Um, and I've mostly been fishing out of shop boats lately. And this was like the first boat that was actually going to be mine in a while mm -hmm. um so i kind of i kind of went all out rigging it up um kind of thought it out i heard that the boat was coming i think it was back in november or december maybe um and part of the reason why i knew about it before a lot of people did was um they had released it to the dealers saying, hey, we're going to come out with a new boat, get your orders in, uh, so on and so forth. Um, so I kind of got a sneak peek at it back then. And when I saw it, I wasn't like, the pictures weren't that great of it. It was just like overhead shot and like some side profile shots. And I like at first I was like, yeah, it's just another another new canoe. And then like I really started looking at it. And what's interesting is, you know, one thing I have to give to New Canoe, um, Blake Young, owner of New Canoe, uh, which I can get him on the show for you guys. Great dude. But what's cool is New Canoe is such a small company. Like, Blake is New Canoe, right? Like, whereas... You know, Big Adventures, there's a few people involved. That's Bonafide Native. Jackson is basically owned by a bunch of people now. Um, Old Town is part of a big corporation of boats. Hobie's a big entity. Um, so New Canoe's a relatively small company. And one thing I can say about Blake Young is he listens um and he takes it to heart um so a lot of the feedback that he's gotten over the years you can tell those things the issues that guys said they did not like about the frontier 12 the pursuit whatever um those are like the most two common tournament boats that are you know kayak fishing boats that they sell um 
geared towards like the big bass fishermen, right? Yeah. And you could tell he listened to all the feedback he got and they incorporated that into this new boat. Um, examples, um, Frontier 12 and the Pursuit didn't have enough scupper holes. Uh, drainage on it wasn't that great. Um, wiring, like access to, to the hull to wire the boats. There wasn't a ton of options on that. Um, the new seats, obviously, which came out before the boat was released. Um, last year, I was in an old seat. This year, I'm in the new seat, which, dude, I tell you what, that is pretty slick. Um, the handles, the handles is a big thing. Um, a lot of guys complained about the flex in the Frontier 12 on the deck. Um, I know that issue has been resolved, um, but the deck is pretty damn solid on it. Stability is just as good as the Frontier 12. Um, I know a lot of uh, a lot of folks like look at the unlimited and they're like, oh, it's just an F12 on steroids. I can see that claim, but it they're kind of two separate boats. Yeah. Um. So, you know, with all that being said, right? Like, I got the boat. Um, you know, I I've obviously been fishing out of it, but I'm also going to use it for duck hunting this fall. Um which is super fun. I got into that last year. I did that out of the pursuit. And when I did that, I just felt like, like the pursuit wasn't stable enough, but it was fast as all get out, whether you were paddling or had a motor on it or whatever, like you saw a lot of guys in, in the pursuit. Um, the unlimited is a lot faster than the F 12. It is slower than the pursuit. Um, but the stability is nuts, man. Like one thing I've noticed um, just from fishing out of it is like I'm standing up a lot, but I'm like turning in the boat, fishing off the side. So like I'm getting that like 360, you know, yeah. casting range instead of like having to reposition the boat. Like I'm a big dude. I didn't feel super comfortable like standing in the pursuit i mean i would it wasn't bad by all means um but it's just I just when you're standing straight and you want to make a turn you're kind of like yeah. some of those kayaks you're like you go to shift your body weight yeah you face sideways and you're like it just feels like it wants to start moving on you yeah exactly exactly whereas like the unlimited dude it's it's solid man it's uh you know like everybody knows i used to fish out of the uh, the blue sky, which obviously stability was ridiculous. And that's what it reminds me a lot of is fishing out of that because I could stand on the deck and just kind of move around. But I, I got a lot more room to move around now compared to the blue sky because that pedal drive unit was in the way, Yeah, you know? So that was kind of hindering, um, like moving, moving around on the deck. Like I can walk up to the nose of the boat if I want. Like I've, I've kind of been playing around with that. Um, I'm actually this weekend um, that we're recording this uh, shooting a video of like a walkthrough of the boat, how I rigged it up, have some on the water shots and stuff. Um, and we'll re release that on uh, both Waypoint TV and the YouTube channel. Um, but super stable. I haven't really paddled it much. Um, but what's also cool is, you know, everybody knows about the pivot drive. They came out with the pivot drive. And what they did is they, um, the way the pivot drive mounts to the back of the new canoes, there's like a quick disconnect bracket back there. Um, and they designed a bracket that is pretty much the same as that. But I have um, like a tiller style trolling motor that I converted. I took the head off, the head sits up next to me. And, um, that quick disconnect bracket is pretty sweet. I got that too, mm -hmm. uh, for my 50 pound thrust trolling motor. Um, the steering's nice and solid on it. Um, so that's super cool. Um, I get roughly like four miles an hour, um, 
if I got it loaded down a little bit, it doesn't really slow down. Um, but I'm looking at maybe doing a Torquedo because um, Mr. Randall got a Torquedo and he put it on his F-12 and he's getting like five miles an hour, nice. which is crazy in that boat. So I would assume I'd get about the same, maybe a little more, maybe five and a half, six. So I've been considering that, but, you know, for right now, I'm, I'm fine with the 50 pound thrust. Um, but what they did for access for wiring. So you mentioned bow mounts, they got the bow mount plate. So you can mount the, the XI three or whatever, you know, bow mount trolling motor you want on the front. Now, before on the other models, that plate didn't have like a handle in it. So you kind of had to like grab it goofy. Yeah. So what they did is they cut, uh, they made it slightly longer and cut an oval in it. So your hand could fit in it. And you got a front front handle after you take your trolling motor off or you're wheeling it down to the ramp, put your, you know, quick mount uh, motor on the, on the bow. Um, which was definitely sweet. The side handles are the same as the side handles on the Flint. So it's like that taco clip paddle holder. Um, so the side handles are super nice. Whereas like on the Frontier 12, I think the Pursuit is the same way. I can't remember off the top of my head where it was like, uh, like a strap with a rubber handle on it. Yeah. It's kind of chintzy, you know? Um, so it's got the nice solid handles on the side, but what they did is they put, um, what they're calling access plates, um, one in the nose, one on each side of the boat. And then there's like, uh, one of the round, um, tank well ports that kind of spins open. It's got the lid that pulls out so you could wire in the back. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what they do is they actually mold the boat. So underneath those removable panels, it's actually solid plastic. So if you're never going to rig your boat, you don't have an open hole there. Um, but the plates have a really nice um, foam gasket that mounts between the plate and the actual hull of the boat. Um, I was a little skeptical about that. I was like, man, is water going to get through this? And I've been out in rain and no issues. I've driven on the road in a downpour with the boat on the trailer, no water in the hall. I've had zero water in my hall. Um, but what you do is you take that plate off and you could cut out the plastic that's underneath there. And you could either drill like a small hole to run wires through, or you can cut the whole port open. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of cool. Um, so I actually have all three, three of mine pretty much cut open in the in the nose of the boat um i think i just have a small hole because i put led uh red and green um nav lights on the front mm -hmm. and i had to get to those wires after i got them in the hall to wire them up to run it to the back of the boat actually no i cut that whole port open so i think most of mine are all open um, so now you have access to pretty much wire from front to back um, for for anything you want, you know, um, which is pretty sweet. Like I got the LED strip lights on the front for the nav. I got some supernova LED strip lights underneath my seat and they come out a little past that. So, like, I could rig up early in the morning if the sun's not up or late at night. Um, they're blue LED strip lights. They're pretty cool. It looks gnarly. I think I got a picture of that on my Instagram. If you guys want to check it out, it's at b.chiller underscore um, or my Facebook page. Um, so, I rigged that up. Um, the way I rigged my trolling motor up, it plugs in in the back. Uh, I put a, a like a trolling motor port right right inside the back, and then I have that come up to the access plate, and I plug the head of the trolling motor on, in on the right side, um, which is really cool. And then I got the head right there and two wires coming off the head to hook to my battery, which is right behind my seat. Um, that's one thing, too, is that rear tank well is so huge. 
like for storage, like literally, like I could fit, everybody knows I run a Yak Gadget crate. I could fit two of those back there, dude. Yeah. The XLs. One thing I will say where I think they kind of messed up is there's two built-in rod holders in the back, but they're too far back in the boat. Okay. Uh, if I was going to make a gripe, like that's what it would be. Um, that's saying something because you, you're a pretty tall dude. You got yeah. long arms, and if you're having trouble reaching back there. They, like I, I haven't put rods in there. Um, sometimes I'll put my paddle broke down. I'll put one, one piece on each side just to have it on me in case like something happens with the motor. Most of the time I put it in the taco clip on the handle, mm -hmm. but it is pretty far, dude. Like you'd have to like stand up and reach back there. Like you can't just like turn and reach it from the seat. It's pretty back there because of where you have to have your seat to have it balanced, like the trolling motor or the trolling motor and the battery and everything. Um, you got to have your seat kind of up a little forward, but that's what gives you so much room in the back. Yeah. Um, so if I was going to make one gripe, like that would probably be it. Um, the one thing like I don't like, uh, the one thing I didn't mention is the rear handle, which is sweet, dude. Um, it's an aluminum bar and it'll fold down into the boat and it kind of locks in the down position and then you could fold it up when you're having to carry it. Whereas before it was like this string with like a plastic cheap handle and it would always sway, you know, like if you had weight in the boat, like you couldn't keep it solid. So like this solid bar, um, it's connected to two plates that mount on each side of the back end of the boat. It's yeah. super solid and it's nice that it could fold down and be out of the way and then pop it up when you need it. Mm -hmm. Um, the front handle normally is the same as on all the other boats, um, but they did make that adjustment for um, if you put the the bow mount motor plate on, it's got a handle in it. Whereas before it was just like that piece of starboard and you kind of have to put your hand under it yeah. and lift the boat to like wheel it or, or lift it into the back of the truck or whatever it may be. Um, so that's kind of nice. Um, I did get the full deck pad kit, which is slick too. Yeah. I, I posted a video, like a short clip video on my Instagram and Facebook as well of that. And what was cool is, um, like, I thought it would just be like the actual deck of the boat, but there's actual pads that go up on the, on the gunnel walls too, which is pretty cool. I like yeah. that. Um, it's got the two built in cup holders as well one on each side of the seat but if you have the steering handle for um you know the the motor motor mount or uh the pivot drive like that handles kind of in the way of that one because it mounts right there yeah um and that's set from the factory because there's uh threaded inserts built into the boat straight from the factory for, for the mounting of the steering handle. Um, but it's not, not a game killer, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, the one big difference between the unlimited in the frontier 12 is the frontier 12 at a front hatch, whereas the unlimited doesn't, but what they did come out with, uh, is what they call the gear pod. And I have that and I love it. Um, it's two thumb screws into the side rails. Uh, one on each side in the front mm -hmm. and it's a big basically front hatch you know like yeah. storage hatch um, and it's removable they put built-in handles both on the underneath so you could like carry it straight out in front of you or there's a handle on the one side so you could just carry it from the handle like it depends how much weight you got in there um, but what I did do is I put my bioeno power 30 amp hour battery in there and I did a yak power cord going through the side with a, a yak attack uh, wire haul kit. Yeah, through through, through, through the haul kit, yep. Yeah. And then I put a port, a uh, yak power port up front 
So I can just leave my battery in the hatch and I can disconnect that if I want to take, you know, the, the gear pot out. And then say I, I want the gear pot out, but I still need my 30 amp hour battery. I wired another port into that side panel on my right side where my trolling motor plugs in too. And then uh, that gear pod's also got a track on it, uh, which is super cool. And um, it's got a track, the hatch, and the handle. Uh, one thing about the unlimited tracks is um, they're drop-in tracks. So that space is a little wider, so you don't have to slide like your T-bolt in for whatever your mountain from one end to wherever. Yeah. You can just tilt it on an angle and then prop it back and it drops right into the track. That's nice because that's that gets to be a pain sometimes when you get something set up and you're like, oh, yeah. I need to switch this out, Dude. but I got to take two items off or whatever. I was really skeptical about it um, when I first heard about it. I'm like, man, are, is there going to be issues with like those track bolts popping out because that space is too wide? And I have yet to have that issue. Um, like you, like, so my fish finder mount, I got a yak attack fish, fish finder mount. And it's got the, um, what is the, their term for that? Like the quick release yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mount system? The lock, lock and load system. Lock and load system. So when you go to put the base in, you, you really have to loosen the base. So that way you get enough space between the actual base and the bottom of the T-bolt. Yeah. So you could, you know, tilt it in. But once you tighten that up, man, it's solid. It's yeah. solid. Um, so that's super cool, too. That's something new. Um, I know the big question from, like, a lot of new canoe folks is, will the tracks be available to upgrade their old boats? The answer is Yes. However, it's going to take some time because things are so crazy right now. Like they can't get the tracks in fast enough yeah. um, to allow that because they have to keep up with the production that they have right now. Um, but those will be available um, in all the tracks on all the unlimiteds are that way. I don't think the other boats are converted over yet but there has been talk that all the other models will have that top load track it's um, nice too man like talking about the tracks the amount of track there is gear tracking <laughs> yeah, in that boat is insane yeah, yeah. like i thought it was crazy when jackson <laughs> came out with the kilroy and the U pick and you know they had tracking all the way down the center of it all yeah. the way down the sides and here comes new canoe like well we're gonna put Yep. two links of the boat down the yep. sides and <laughs> like well it's and that's that's pretty much how all their boats have been so like on the frontier 12 um and you can do this on the unlimited too like you could put two seats in it and space them out you know so you can go tandem which is cool like you know it's funny man like you know working at rock town oh that was the last pot time i was on the pod here man with you guys was when we talked about rock town yeah. Um, you called me the janitor, <laughs> you son of a bitch. Um, but uh, but um, we get a lot of folks that come into Rock Town that are like, "I'm looking we, for a boat." Hold on, wait. Didn't you get fired? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You weren't that's cleaning I, the floors good enough. That's what I keep telling Travis. No, they gave me the summer off, um, <laughs> which is great. I'm totally happy with that. Um. We get a lot of customers that come into the shop and they're like, I want a boat that I could take out myself, but from time to time, I want to be able to like take my, my son or my daughter or my wife with me. And like, I've always gone straight to the frontier 12 with them because yeah. like, that's one of their designs. Now you can do that within the, the unlimited. I know you've been doing that a bunch with the Kilroy with your boys, which is yep. super cool too. Uh, you pick, uh, by Jackson, that's another option too. That you know, you got that wide open deck where you could basically kind of do that. 
Yeah. Um, I've never seen anybody doing it in the U pick, but I've always thought that since it came out. Like, yeah, you have it has the ability to do it because it does have that gear track and it's got yeah. the same style seat as the Kilroy. The only right. thing that makes that kind of a pain is the base of that seat. I'm sure you're familiar with it. It's got yeah. that big plastic piece yeah. that the seat and that takes up a ton of room. So the way I ended up doing it was just buying somebody. Uh, I think I bought Justin's old uh, Coos HD seat and bought two uh vertical tie downs and that and put uh just strap the seat down dude and it's got deck padding in there so it keeps it from sliding around and being like obnoxiously loud and both my kids are really little still so they both can actually sit in the seat together they're getting a little too big last time i took them out they didn't like sitting with each other I don't know if that's just a bro <laughs> brother thing or yeah. You know, oh yeah. It's definitely a brother thing. Well, they have both gotten a little taller. So since last year, you know, it was a little bit more uncomfortable with them. And then they both wanted to, to ride around in Mike Grimsley's Hobie and cause he was letting them use the motor. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, Zach, yeah, cool. He's like, all right, Zach, go cool. ahead and go. And Zach would pin it. Like, do you see Mike <laughs> almost fall out of the boat? That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. It was cool. It was a cool weekend. They both got to catch their first bass. So that's super cool, man. That's super cool. But yeah, dude, like what? all that gear tracking, dude. I was like, that's awesome because it's got yeah. like two sets on each side of the gunnels. You know, you got the uh, the yeah. ones that sit on top of the gunnel, and then you got the one that sits like almost what it's almost like another ledge, right? Like before yeah, you get that, down to the deck. Well, so that that was one thing too that they changed up that a lot of guys complained about, like. Um, in the Frontier 12, in the Pursuit, the gear track was down, like, below the gunnel walls. Yeah. So if you wanted to mount, like, a um, like an over-the-side transducer or something like that, um, that would be over the edge of the boat, or even, like, like, a, like a torpedo throttle, you mm -hmm. know? Like... Yak Gadget, shout out to Yak Gadget. You know, John came out with that bracket for those boats where it kind of goes up and sits over the side of the gunnel. Yeah. Um, so you could do stuff like that, um, which is huge, man. Like, that was such a, a turnoff to me back in the day. Yeah. Um, and not only that, but, like, you used to have to – undo all four thumb screws for the seat to take it off um so like for me like that sucked because of my trailer you know yeah. i i run that yakima easy rider trailer and i always put my boat on the bottom unless like i was traveling with somebody like jay or uh travis or somebody like that then i would move my boat to the top so i wouldn't have to take my seat off because i didn't have enough clearance with the seat down to yeah. fit under those crossbars. So what they did is they, um, with the new seats, they made a quick disconnect. Um, it's just like this plastic bra uh, plate almost that bolts to the bottom frame. And then New Canoe's known for having their 360 swivel seats. The bottom square of the swivel slides right into that plate and then there's like a little plastic tab that keeps it from coming in and out and then when you want to take it off you just press that tab and slide it out so now i can leave the lower um part of my seat uh the main seat frame attached and just you know quick release the the actual seat itself Mm -hmm. and throw it in the bed of the pickup or the back of the Suburban. So that's super cool, too. That's something that's kind of new. I mean, it's been out for a little bit, um, but that was super huge. Um, I don't have it yet, but, like, they have a riser kit for your seat. But one thing I will say with that Unlimited, you sit up high, man. It's, mm -hmm. like, I've always been a fan of the high seats. Like, that was one of the reasons why I went in the blue sky. Um what did you six know, five like, right? <laughs> I'm like six three, six four. Yeah, but, I mean, like you, I used to laugh at seeing you in the Bonafide and any other any kayak that you had to paddle. I always laughed at because I'm like, he's just too big for it, man. And that blue yeah. sky yeah. was like your dream because you're like, I can stretch my legs out. Now. Yeah, dude, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's just it, right? Like, like I, 
when I had my Bonafide, I loved it because it was such a high seat. And, and funny story is, is when I went to um, demo my Bonafide, I was set on the fact that I was going to buy a Pursuit. And I ended up in the Bonafide because I thought it was more, it was more stable than the Pursuit. Yeah. Uh, looking back, I think I honestly just didn't give that pursuit enough time during that demo because I jumped in the Bonafide twice and I jumped in the new canoe once. And I'll tell you, man, that pursuit paddled way better than that Bonafide. Mm -hmm. um, but the flip side of that was is the Bonafide had a higher seat. Yeah. The new unlimited seat is higher than the Bonafide seat, I feel. Yeah, um, I do have a kayak cushion on that, but I mean, what's that? Raise you up, maybe a half inch, if that. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, probably like close to an inch thick, but when you're sitting, sitting it, you're on pressing it, it. Yeah. yeah, it's like a half inch, you know. Um, so I love that aspect of it, you know, like that high seat because I can stand straight up, you know, like it's not like off. off like you have to have a pull strap to pull you up out of the seat or anything like that compared to like, you know, when I would fish out of like a big rig or a Kusa or the Liska, yeah. like I would have to utilize that strap sometimes just because I'm a tall dude, man, trying to pull a freaking Oak tree up out of a low sitting seat, dude. Yeah. Like you need some leverage. I, mean, I had to use it in my Kusa too. So like it, and I'm only six foot tall. So, yeah. I can't imagine. Yeah, so um, that's super nice too, man. Like, I love the aspect of that. I'm like, it's funny. Every time I get out in it, like, I'm like, oh, I kind of like this and I kind of like that, dude. Like, I think I can honestly say, and this is in no way like being biased because I'm on the new canoe team. Um, but like, this is one of my favorite boats I've ever been in, like by far. Mm -hmm. Um, if I had to paddle it, it may be a slightly different story, but like, you know, you, you did say though, like it, cause there was a lot of people, cause that thing is what 40 inches wide. Yeah. It's, Close to uh, it or something. I'm going to get shot for this, but I think it's like 42 or 43 maybe or 41. It's, it's insane. 41. wide. If you haven't yeah. seen it in person and wait till you see it, you're going to be like, Oh my gosh, this thing is a barge. Yeah. And yeah. It, it looks like. You know, like it's something you never want to paddle. And you said that, if I remember correctly, like you paddle surprisingly well. It's not something you want to put miles on paddling, but if you need to, you're going to be surprised at how well it actually moves through the water. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it paddles way better than what the Frontier 12 was. Yeah. Jay Rand <laughs> on the house. Oh, oh, oh. oh what's up, Dimples? What's up, man? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, definitely paddles better. I mean, it's not the greatest, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, but, yeah. So let's talk about one thing that I kind of was, I, I don't want to say weary of, but I always thought was kind of weird is the design of the deck, right? It's got, like, it's got that raised kind of platform where the scuppers are like it sits deep down in there. And I was always afraid of like tripping around on that stuff. Like, cause I wear, I wear kind of a lot of times, especially when I'm on the river and I, I tend to wear these actually when um, I'm paddling or even in the pedal drive, I wore them. I have a pair of like kind of aggressive shoes. I have an aggressive tread design on them. Now I was always mm -hmm. afraid of like kind of getting my shoe like wedged in there or, kind of catching the edge have you ever had that issue no i haven't had that issue and i've worn shoes and obviously now that it's warm i've been wearing sandals uh everybody knows i like to wear sandals and sunburn the crap out of my feet but uh and eat shit uh, on a uh, <laughs> yeah right. um but uh so the reason why that is is drainage so yeah. the the unlimited has seven scupper holes in it and they did those big channels so that water would drain. And if you did have water coming up, like say you had two people in and you don't have scupper plugs in, you know, 
like there's like the native is infamous for it man like you stand up in the native and there's water on your feet yeah. uh, same thing with like the old town predator i don't know if they've switched that design but the older old town predator i've been in like it was the same thing you'd stand up and there was water on the deck yeah. so they did that so at least now that water is below the deck i mean yeah. it's it's on the deck but it's in those channels not on the actual surface that you stand on you know yeah which I mean? is awesome because there's nothing worse where you're get if especially if you're like on a river you're getting in and out of your boat you know and that's always been something that's annoyed me is like you know you're always going to get water in there and but if you're getting in and out a lot or whatever you're hitting some waves and you know in a good yeah. long day you're you're getting a good puddle in there and you know, you're sitting there trying to measure fish or whatever. And you're like, <laughs> so, you know, that was the thing going back, like to what we started with, you know, like the frontier 12 was infamous for like collecting water in the back, back of the boat. Yeah. Um, Cause it only had two scupper holes, you know, and they were back there. And, you know, part of that problem was like the deck would flex and it, it didn't have those drainage channels to direct the water into those holes. Well, now you have direction into those holes. Like if you look at the inside of the hull or the top of the deck, right? From, from the bow, looking back, there's a slight pitch going to the center of the boat. And then same thing from the back of the boat, the stern, looking towards the bow, there's a pitch back there. So all that water is running straight to those scupper holes. Um, you know, like the one thing is like, we almost we almost saw Jimmy Skinner do this uh, when we were on Kentucky Lake. Me, Jay Randall, and Jimmy. Jimmy forgot to put his scupper plugs in his Frontier Twelve, and he was running his EPS motor, and water was coming up through there and filling up in the back of the boat, and he almost sunk it. With the Unlimited, um, you don't have to have the scupper plugs in running a motor. Like, there's two scuppers where a little bit of water comes up but it drains right away yeah. out of the others you know six scuppers or five scuppers that are still there so that's super cool i do run two scupper plugs in those particular holes and they're right underneath my seat that's where like the most weight of the boat is so it's pushing down the most there into the water um and it's it's such a minimal amount of water i don't have to but I don't know. I'm just weird like that. I just plugged them anyways. Don't have to worry about it. I don't have water shooting up out of them or anything like that. But um, compared to some of the older models, I know in my pursuit, when I ran that same motor on the back of the pursuit, I had to have my scupper plugs in. Otherwise, I'd have water coming up. Yeah. With this new Unlimited, the way they designed the bottom of the hull, you don't have to do that anymore. Um, and that's super cool. There is, um, there's a really cool video. I forget if it was Craig Dye or one of the other guys. They were fishing a river in their Unlimited. And this was like right when it came out. And there was like a little waterfall. And they nosed the boat into the waterfall. So the water was coming right over the nose of the boat into the deck. It drained instantly. They held the boat there. It never filled up with water. It drained instantly. It That's was awesome. pretty cool. And that was like pretty impressive to me, I thought. Um, you know, and that was before I got mine when that video was released. So if you go to New Canoes page, that was probably posted in like beginning of April, middle, end of March. Mm -hmm. um, but like that's a true testament to how fast that deck drains. And that goes back to those drainage channels. Yeah. And the extra scupper plug or scupper holes in it. Um, but I guess long winded answer to your question. Like I've never tripped on those or felt like I was going to trip or anything like that. They're not wide enough to do that. I don't think yeah. it may look like that, but when you actually stand in it and walk around, it's not an issue at all. I'll well, trip over a fishing rod before I trip over that. <laughs> well, let's talk about, there was a couple of things that, you and I kind of discussed prior to starting the pod. And that was a couple issues with like some cracking and stuff in some certain parts. Do you want to elaborate on what you've yeah. seen and heard? Cause you're in a, probably the new canoe owners group, I would assume. So yeah. 
You've heard so the complaints. It, yeah, it wasn't necessarily cracking. Um, there was maybe six, seven boats out of the thousands that have already been made um, that had some soft spots on a couple of the diamonds of the deck. You know, like if you look across a deck, it's kind of like a, a diamond or like an arrowhead shape, right? Yeah, and you're talking couple, about the, the raised parts that create those yeah, channels. Yeah, the raised parts between the channels. There was a couple boats that had a couple soft spots in them. Um, this, I believe, was more than likely from from what I've heard, um, was from um, there might have not have been enough plastic in the mold when they went to mold the boat, yeah. uh, which was error at the factory. Um, but what I will say is every single one of those people that had issues had brand new boats sent to them with zero issues. Um, so that's the other thing too about new canoe, right? Like if there's an issue, they're quick to jump on the problem. If you contact them, the issue was like a lot of guys got their boats they had an issue, so they went on Facebook and they were like, this thing's a piece of junk and look at this and this isn't right and blah, 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 blah. Um, which, by any means, I'm not saying it was right. It it was clearly a defective boat. It's the same thing if you are in a defective or replace it. Uh, you know, it's with anything. Uh, yeah. Any good company will stand by their product and replace it or fix fix the issue. Um, so all those people got taken care of. Um, you know, that's one thing I would say to anybody out there. If you ever have an issue with your boat, one of your accessories, your electronics, whatever, reach out to that company. All the companies in the industry are pretty awesome about customer service. Yeah. Everybody knows that goes a long way. Um, and just reach out to them, tell them your issues, send them some photos maybe some videos and they'll take care of it. Um, yeah. And I'm going to kind of elaborate on this because this has been an ongoing issue. And when you're part of Facebook and you're part of the owners groups, you see, yeah. you see the stuff across the board on all the manufacturers, whether it's Jackson, Hobie, new canoe, old town, whatever, all you guys are not, we're not going to get a hundred percent perfection all the time. I mean, we all work jobs and nobody here, nobody can tell me that they are 100% awesome every single day and they do nothing wrong. Mistakes right. get made. So instead of getting on Facebook and having a bash session, you know, just reach out to your manufacturer, register the boat. Nine times out of 10, you should have that boat registered as soon as you get it anyways. Take your pictures explain the issues you know i had an issue with one of my jackson seats where it tore where one of the straps were and it was yeah. like three months into having it and it could have been my fault too i have no idea it you know from what i understood it was just a week probably a weak point in the stitching and they sent me a whole brand new seat cover and you know what i never even used it never even used it brian all i yeah. did was like you know, yeah. you know most of the beef the good part was still there sure and it never broke Never yeah. broke. And so I sold the boat and I said, Hey dude, that seat cover still works good. If it ever breaks, here's a brand new one with it, yep. you know, yep. and they were quick about it. You guys also got to remember, especially this has been going on for over a year now. All these manufacturers are behind. They have been behind. So if you reach out to their customer service departments and you don't get a response within 24 or 48 hours, just have a follow-up email. Don't be yeah. nasty, dude. They're trying to get to it. I know Jackson. Yeah. I've been in the Jackson factory. There's not like a ton of like people working the front office there. You know, it's right. like seven people and one's in accounting, one's in this, one's a customer service person. So, you know, they're probably dealing with hundreds of emails a day. Just, just give them time, relax, you know? And that's, that's one thing I'll say too, like going back to what I started with new canoe is a, very small company. Um, nine times out of 10, if you have an issue like that, it's Blake Young, the owner of the company replying to you. And he's a very down to earth guy. And he's like, Hey, what happened? Send me some info. Let me 
talk to the factory. Let me see how fast I can get this rectified for you and get to you a new boat or whatever it may be. Um, you know, the other, the other thing that came up to was there was a couple of boats out there that had a little bit of pitting, um, or like off gassing is what it's called. Yeah. Um, and it's when there's, you know, air trapped in the plastic as it's cooling down, you know, you get these little itty bitty, like pin whole looking things. It doesn't go all the way through the hull. That plastic is super thick. It's a cosmetic thing. 80% of the boats on the market all have it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? But here's if the you, thing. If you right? look through your kayak, you look long enough, you'll probably find some. Like, well, this exactly. has been going on for a while. I've seen it in every boat I've owned, dude. I've seen it in my Bonafide. I've seen it in Jackson's. I've seen it in Old Towns. I see it in New Canoe. Like, it happens. There's no real good way to solve that. Um, but I guarantee you they're looking for a way. Yeah. Um, I think the big reason why a lot of this came up is because they released the boat. Um, they said they wouldn't ship for about a month. Um, that did get pushed back two weeks because they found a couple issues with the mold with the first couple of boats they ran and they sent the mold back to the guy that made it. They made those corrections to make good boats and it came back. So there's been this huge backlog. There's been this huge wait. Like I was one of the super fortunate ones that got my boat early. Yeah. Um, like Brad Hurlboss, I think he gets his boat next week. Um, David Brooke gets his boat like two weeks or next week. Like there's guys that aren't going to get their boats till August. So I think what it is is, some of these folks have had a very long wait time to get their hands on their boat that they spent good, hard earned money on and they get it and they just start going through with it, a fine tooth comb because they've waited so long. And then they, they get upset because, Oh, I waited this long. And you know, they automatically think the boat's garbage when it's, it's not, it's, yeah. it's just a cosmetic defect. Um, the only, ones that weren't cosmetic defects are the are like literally i think it was five or six out of literally a three four thousand boats that were made something mm -hmm. like that um that had that issue so it was probably some new guy on the third shift molding the boat that wasn't checking what he was doing and a couple bad ones went out the door yeah problem was rectified corrected so but i mean other than that man i mean you know just like i said i will tell you i will promise you and if anybody ever proves me wrong i will give them a hundred dollars <laughs> you have an issue with your boat and blake young doesn't take care of you i will give you a hundred dollars out of my pocket and i'll give you control of the paddle and fin podcast you don't want that but I'll give it to you. <laughs> but no, for real, man. Like, and, and like I said, dude, it's not just him. It's any boat manufacturer out there, man. Like, they will go the distance to make things right. Yeah. Um, I mean, every company that I've dealt with, because obviously I've seen some things working at a kayak shop, man. Like, we've had seats come in broken, uh, handles missing you know, seats missing, things like that. Yeah. You call oh, manufacturers. Hardware falling out of the bags, you know. Yeah, like. right, right. I've seen it all. Like, you call the manufacturer, they're like, I'm going to overnight this to you. Tell your customer they can come pick up the boat tomorrow. Yeah. Like, they care that much. They will pay the $60 to overnight you a $5 part so that way your customer's happy. Yeah. Or you, the consumer, is happy. You know yeah. what I mean? So... It happens. Don't freak out. Just contact the powers that be and they'll take care of you, man. Yep. Well, dude, I think we'll wrap it up. I appreciate the time. Did you have anything else you wanted to add? Uh, no, man. I mean, that's it. Like, if anybody's got any questions about the Unlimited, uh, feel free to hit me up. If you're looking to, like, demo one, um, hit me up as well. 
or you can go to the new canoe website and you could see the team members that are on the on the new canoe team and there's it's like a map and there's little dots all over the place and you click on that team member and it'll show what boats they have available and hit them up on social media and uh they'll they'll set up a demo with you man that's what's cool about the new new canoe team guys they have this really cool interactive map you could see what team members are in your area hit them up and see if they got an unlimited and if they do i'm telling you right now they'd be more than happy to uh, try it out if you're in my area or going to be at one of like the trail stop events or something like that um feel free to hit me up as well and uh i'd love to have you try it man it's a super cool boat i will say uh icast is about a month away just be watching new canoe <laughs> uh icast is so much fun to see what everybody's coming out with i uh i will be there um i will be there tuesday wednesday thursday um so i'll have some some live stuff going up on the paddle and fin page uh from the show um uh, but also on the new canoe page um i do a podcast over there every tuesday night um seven central eight eastern five o'clock on the west coast six o'clock in the mountains um but uh i'll be doing some live shows straight from the new canoe booth uh there at icast and then i'll also be walking around doing some some videos and stuff like that live on the paddle and fin page as well awesome man well brian thanks for joining me dude i appreciate it, it was kind of last minute but yeah no i was worries. sitting there coming up with some ideas i'm like we haven't talked about the unlimited and i was yeah. like well, let me see if i reach out to brian you said let's do this now so yeah, like you said, Jay, Jay just showed up. He's up for the weekend. We're uh, we're going to shoot some videos and uh, stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I was like, yeah, can you do it now? Like, <laughs> So that way Sergeant Randall wasn't sitting around twiddling his thumbs. He uh, he went downstairs, so I'm sure he's talking to the family. But, uh, um, yeah, man, should be good. All right, man. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace. Thanks for tuning in to another killer episode on Paddle and Finn. Don't forget to go check out our website at paddle, the letter N, and fin.com. Don't forget to check out the YouTube channel at Paddle and Fin. If you got a question, comment, want to hear from a future guest on a future episode, feel free to email us at paddle, the letter N, and fin at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Paddle and Fin on Facebook and Instagram. Shout out to our show supporters, Angler. The Angler button and app just makes for a better time on the water and creates a virtual logbook for every fishing outing out on the water. Shout out to Rocktown Adventures, located in Northern Illinois, for all your kayaking, camping, and hiking needs. Shout out to Jigmasters Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to 